this isn't a prayer just for when you're when you're at a low point. This no, is, this is... and that's why I love it. It's <laughs> <laughs> I serious. love it. I love it. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. And I'm a Berenstein Bear. Berenstein Bear. There was a movie about the Berenstein Bears. Is it Berenstein or Stein? I don't know. Or Stein. And um, I think they're German. <laughs> so Stein. Hmm. Berenstein. And they were in a plane. The dad bear was flying a plane. And they were over the ocean. A movie? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And they didn't know which way was up because the water and the sky. Uh, R.I.P. Um, JFK Jr. Hmm. Um, and yeah, but I think they survived. I don't remember. Maybe that was the end. Was uh, it yeah. a cartoon? No, it was real life. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the bears, they're, they're incredibly great actors. But Bears can be trained to act. Bears can be trained. This here is Frank. He's got his chef job um job interview maybe yeah i think he had somewhere to go it looks like he's like gonna work at a kitchen or something he um is now a panera employee he got that kitchen job as part of his work release and today is thursday thirsty thursday as the kids say as the adults say just another thursday walk through thursday as i was getting we're there. trying to push it i was again okay let's start over all right as a kid he say, got that kitchen job as the kids say, it's Thirsty Thursday. As the adults say, just another Thursday. But as Croak and Crow says, it's Walk Through Thursday, where we walk through the 23rd Psalm. We're yeah. not walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We're walking through the whole darn thing. Yeah. The whole darn thing. Mm-hmm. So check out week one. If you haven't watched week one of Walk Through Thursday's 23rd Psalm edition, then turn this off. Turn, turn. No, you can hop in anytime you want. It's like um, Double Dutch. Just just jump in. Turn it off. No. And you go and watch the first episode. You let me know what you think. And then you come back to this one. Because they won't know. They'll be like, wait, I thought the 23rd Psalm started with the Lord is my shepherd. No, Why are you they saying? They can watch it. Just look in the, in the description and see the first line that you missed. All right. I guess we're just a, a channel of anarchy over here. Do whatever you want. Just, you know, skip through, skip to the 30 minute mark right now and, and see where, just jump in. Double Dutch. A little more cheerful. <laughs> Thank you. All right. But today you don't have a paper for me. So how am I supposed to know? We're running out of time of the week. I did want to address um, that it's eating disorders awareness. Week. Well, that can be tomorrow's podcast. That'll be Friday. So forget we even said that. All right. Unless okay. they want me to hear it now. Hold, hold off to tomorrow. We're going to talk about eating disorders and awareness for said disease. Would you say it was a disease? or just Probably, a, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Actually, it'll give me more a time. A disorder. It's a disorder. Disordered, disordered um, thinking, maybe? Disordered thinking. Well, hey, we'll dive all into it tomorrow. My other question is, if you spray paint the snow, is that... Um, Graffiti? Is that... What's that word? Um... Va- uh, vandalism vandalism that's a great question um I'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and say yes not that i was gonna go out with this can of spray paint and uh write croak and crow on all those big beautiful white mountains and all the parking lots well no i mean maybe it's be a little I'm asking for a friend it'd be like vigilant vigilantism um i don't i i think you know you are putting paint into the ecosystem hmm. but oh, that would be so like nitpicky yeah well no i'm saying like like uh, as a law perspective they'd be able to stop you but on on a moral perspective no go spray paint some snow y'all unless you know something i don't and then let me know yeah and the other other not it's not a question it's just something i thought about you know when you give someone a present because you feel um i'm sorry yeah you know i'm going to give you this frog this gold lucky feng shui frog Um, Because I did you wrong. I spray painted your snow and I felt bad. Okay. I don't, I just realized that I don't want that to happen because say you did it to me and you're like, here's, here's, here's a present. I'm sorry. I I did. I'm sorry. I, I broke the heels off your shoes. Every time I look at the frog, I'm going to remember that you broke the heels off my shoes. Well, that's just a bad way to look at it. 
because like it's it's supposed what would be worse is then to just have nothing and just have the heels off of your shoes and if someone asks like oh who cares Mm -hmm. or do you look at it as like a peace token a peace offering okay and it's like oh, okay, uh, and you get mad at your your the heels broken off your shoe, and you're ready to go stomp that person out, and you're like, you know what? No, I I was too easy on them. And then you look at your, <laughs> and then you look at your frog, and you're like, okay, they're not a bad guy. Okay, they mistakenly stomped on my shoe. Okay, but gifts are also my love language, so I'll defend it to the death of me. Defending gifts. I'll defend gifts, but so yeah, walk through Thursday, twenty third Psalm. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. <laughs> I'm gonna roll the intro. You don't need to do that. Um. All right, but you don't have a paper for me, is what you're saying. Do you want to buy? Do you want a phone? Ah, I'm over the phone. Yeah, I want a phone. Okay. I you like do? to really look at the words. All right. So our, last week we did. Um, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. That was verse one. There's six verses. Today we're on verse two, which is. Here we go. You guys can see it here. But the second verse of the 23rd Psalm, it goes a little something like this. He maketh me lie lie down down in green green pasture. pasture. So you know it. (laughs) He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You know I know it. You know I know you know you know it. Well, of course I know. How can I say every week... I have the 23rd Psalm memorized, and I don't know the second line. Yeah, I just wanted to look at it regardless. No, that's fine. Irregardless. Green post- postures. <laughs> Posture. Green pastures. Still waters. Still waters run deep. All right. I'm going to let you take the, the, the lead on this one. I feel like I really took majority of the last one. So no, I don't think so. But We're going to divvy this up 75-25 this no, week. No. Me and Frank are going to. It's always 50-50. Frank is tired from his job. Yeah. He worked an overnight. And you know what it's like to work at Panera because... I used to work there. You used to work there. And that's not your shirt that he's wearing. No. It's his shirt. It's his shirt. Unless they change the uniform. We don't know it. All right. This is never the uniform. I got... <laughs> it's a funny story how I got that shirt, actually. I'm a great worker. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you, if you guys worked in kitchens, it gets a little hectic. And kitchen managers, not to stereotype, but they're usually insane... And so there's one. I think he was. That's he, not a stereotype. <laughs> it's it is. Not? No, it is. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And he was like bipolar. And oh, so, and so that's he, not funny. I wanted a fun one. Well, no, it, it's funny. I mean, so um, and so he used to oh be cheery and stuff, but then he just like flip out and like if you made a sandwich wrong, he grab it, like Gordon Ramsay style and like throw it on the floor in anger. No. And um that's just like on a TV show. Yeah, I know. And and the thing is it, we were a bunch of kids. I mm-hmm. was I was 16. So I was I was a young young lad, real hard worker. It was all scrubbed up and and one it was one of these days at work. And it was a rush and I was just head down quiet and doing my thing and he was flipping out so much so. And then like my my shift was over like an hour ago, like was an hour prior, but it was just so much going on, and I, I finished it all. And he was just in my ear, yelling at me, no. bel- belittling me. And you, so, if you told me that at the time, I would have run him over. <laughs> and with it, with the like. So yeah, so the way I shopping I, cart, not a car. The way I I, I worked at the time is, I'll give you a hundred percent, no matter what you do at the job. In my head, I'm like, I'm not coming back to this place. I'm like gonna be I'm the deuce to see ya i was like i was set i'm like all right well this is my last shift i don't have to worry about it at the end of the shift because our aprons was, was wear your own stuff and then they gave you an apron oh. and so he came over with a bag with a t-shirt inside and you know gifts are my love language and he was like hey i just want to say i really appreciated you today you really did did a lot of work and so i forgave my abuser for a but and that's t-shirt. a good example of remembering a terrible time with a gift a sorry gift which is what but, i but can you i could have just quit that place yeah i guess but now i still remember the bad time yeah but it ends with the shirt That's that i true. still have thinking that you'll forget the bad time just because you didn't get a gift is probably not but don't let gifts let you get abused out there folks well we talked about frank's shirt but what about your shirt temple law i'm alum i am a lawyer uh you could probably just tell by my demeanor or your cousin gave it to you from Temple Law. 
You decide. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the 23rd Third Psalm. Psalm. Um, okay, so we're saying that um, he leads you through the green right, pastures and beside the still waters. And is that literal? Well, no, because... Uh, uh, we're also not sheep. Everyone could look out the window right now and they're not going to see green pastures or still waters. Majority. So it's obviously symbolic. Yeah. So green pastures symbolize something that's alive, living, and also not treacherous. He doesn't lead you beside, you know, um, a, a foreboding forest. Oh, uh, yeah. Or something like, and same thing with the still water. Many times when I say the 23rd Psalm and I get to the words still water, I think of calm. You know, it's not a yeah. raging sea. Yeah. It's not a flood. It's not. It's also not um, a drought, you yeah. know, like it's water is life and it's just peaceful is, is what I was what peaceful. I take from it. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to talk about is, I, I mean, we we talked a little because the first episode of Walk Through Thursday was nice because it's just saying the Lord is my shepherd. So we yeah. talked entirely about right. what it means and, and the peace it brings. But I like the line where he lieth me beside still waters. And I think that just really are, brings home the point of we talked about don't get stressed. Like mm -hmm. a sheep should be able to sleep knowing that its shepherd is watching over it. Right. It shouldn't get so anxious in its own sheep world. Like without the wolves and stuff, it's, you have faith that the shepherd protects you. And so just the idea of sleeping by still waters, it's, it's that peace that being watched over, being taken care of. Right. Provide you. You can you can get this peaceful sleep in what otherwise is a hectic life for a sheep. Right. Um. Do sheep eat grass? I imagine they're. What do they call the people that eat grass? Things starts with an M. Grass eaters. No. Like main main they. Omnivore. What is it when what what what's herbivore? It? No, but what is it like an animal who chews grass? They do what to grass? Ah oh, man. Masticate it. Masticate it. I don't even know what that word means. They chew their cud. No, that's a cow. You know, cow. That's a whole different yeah, story. Gross. Whole different story. I think I, I I I know they eat grass. That's why they're out there. They're yeah. eating grass. Okay. So, um, if you're if you're if you're led beside, if you're led to the green pastures beside the still waters, you have all the food and drink you could ever. Yeah. What? You're chowing down, you know? So you're being nourished. And it's sort of like the other part where it's... So I, I said he layeth me down. That's like the... Gives you the peace to relax. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the leadeth is is the green pastures. And I think you can look Well, it at, does say he maketh me to lie down in some versions. And it's like, what? Well, he layeth, maketh me. No, oh, no. I mean, like, um, he is saying, like, stop moving. We're here. Relax chill out <laughs> yeah but um so for, so that's the the sleep peace relax you he's got you covered there's not gonna be any wolves tonight don't worry yeah but the leadeth me to green pastures it's not he'll always keep you in green, it's like it's he'll always keep you in green pastures it's he'll leadeth you he brought you there yeah and, and so with this idea it's you have this faith in jesus and it's like to guide you down the right path to the green pastures. So if you're in a bad place, it's like, oh, what do I, once again, what do I do? I don't see any green grass around. I'm not going to be able to eat and then I won't be able to sleep. And then a wolf is going to get, this is what people are thinking on a daily basis. Right. They don't even know it. But it's saying, okay, my shepherd, he knows where the green pastures are. He'll leadeth me. All I need to do is have faith. And then I'm chowing down buffet style right. on the grass. Right. Um, and like I said last week um, about the pronouns, <clears throat> pronouns, you can um, pray for someone else or uh, it's always a... What do you keep doing? I'm throwing a pen. It was a pen. Um, uh, when I, It's always a confusion to me when I say you can pray for someone else because I always think... What gives you the right? <laughs> I think of the of the people who don't have anyone to pray for them. Yeah. And then I say, well, that's not fair because, you know, you know, even um, a celebrity will say, like, pray for me or pray for someone. And everyone yeah. has a whole world praying for them. And, oh, oh, well, to the poor person who has no one to pray for them. So it's like praying for them 
is always gives me a little bit of a thought hesitation. But when I think of it more as, like I said, um, anytime you're reading the Bible, you're you're getting um, reassured, yeah. and therefore, yeah, you know, you know, it like comforts both of you, and it and it does like so it's, so it's like doesn't matter if I pray for you. Well, I, do, I think any kind of en- good energy that I'm sending, yeah, good energy praying, is good. Yeah, no, definitely. And with that said, I'm glad you brought that up because. I th- I think it's a big point of like I I disagree. I mean, I think the Bible is is the greatest book and everyone should read it, but there I think in re- like closed off blinders on religious ideology, it's when you join this church, when you read this book, when you listen to what we say and mm-hmm. and, and then you'll be given the, the gifts. Right. And I hundred percent stand by the bible and and stuff but it's what you're saying it, it's not so much this okay well now i'm good everyone if you don't read the bible you won't be as good as i am it's all a reassurance of these things are right. happening right we are god's children whether we decide to right live a spiritual life or not we are we are in my belief being like trying to be guided towards green pastures or whether we we say these so certain words in, in a different in certain sex or not. It's like, this is, we live in a spiritual world. Right. Every person, if you believe you're a spiritual person, a vessel of God's love, it it can't stop there. Right. And so, yeah. So it's, it's always it's this reaffirmation of, okay, that person's going through something. You have to remember, just like I have faith that the Lord guides me. I, I, want, I need to have faith that the Lord will guide that person. Right. And when Take you say that. it, you set you you don't um you know so it's a retelling you know the Hail Mary prayer um is a retelling of a part of the Bible when the angel visited Mary and yes. said, Hey Mary <laughs> So Mary Sometimes people call it the Hey Mary. Hey Mary, full of grace, you know. Anyway, it's a it's a retelling um of, of something that happened. The twenty third Psalm, you don't say um like he led past tense. He led them. Yeah. Say like, yeah. you know, when um when they were led out of the desert or, or you know. Yeah. It's um present leadeth. tense. Right. He's leadeth. He, I wish we still used that kind of lingo. Yeah. <laughs> My mom, I'm go with, I'm gonna go with to the store. Yeah. So he if if you don't want to say leadeth, and if you look at a different version, it's not gonna say it'll say like he probably he leads. So he leads me beside the still waters. So you're not saying he, no, he led he me. He leads me to the green pastures. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He guideth me to green pastures. Wait. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, so I've had it all mixed up. and you. That's why I said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We we've said a million times on here that the tiny little words don't matter. Like I said, you can even change. Okay, what you're saying. I, mean, I guess it makes more sense. Like, why would you fall asleep next to water? It's kind of dangerous. High tide. Dude, he made me experience high tide. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, anyway. Sorry for the mess up, guys. There's not a mess up. He does lead you to green pastures. How else do you get there? Well, that's the thing. Is uh, it? Is it? Um, you know, I dream a genie, <laughs> and they're all there. Well, but my point was that it wasn't a story that's been told and told. He led us to the green pastures. Yeah. He led us to the yeah. still waters. Just as he once did, he will do it. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing and, it. Present tense. And so, even if you're going through, like, just like last week, we talked about. When you say, I shall not want, and then, you know, you have people who are down in the dumps who say, well, I shall want because I'm wanting right now. I want some. Well, the same thing. Food. <laughs> with this. Um, I'm not in still waters. I'm very much in the middle You're in the, of yeah, a turbulent yeah, yeah. sea. Um, he he will take you. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying of the, of the well, now I, I learned it's not lead it through the green pastures, but with the, it's not gonna let this go. but with the green pastures thing, it's not saying like, I, like I just sort of brushed over this, that you'll always be in green pastures. Right. It, it's this, you're right. right. It's this present, like, okay. It, it's a reaffirmation of 
you're not in green pastures right now. And it's not, oh, well, that's weird because it says he led you to green pastures. It's, right. it's this constant. Yeah. You have faith that, that you're being led. Yeah. You know, like just look at them when they when they trek through the desert for mm-hmm. um, when M- Moses mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moses, you know, for for how long? Forty years. Um, long time. It was a long time to the land of milk and honey. They said, and the people were like, "What's going on? This is terrible. I'm I'm tired and I'm hungry." And it, it was this. He's leading. You're you're going like you're you're Moving. on your way. And therefore, walk through thursdays so we are walking to those green you're always pastures. going through it well we are i'm going through it now, now people say that as a bad thing but it could just mean everything you know what i mean yeah. you're always going through it i'm going through a good time i'm going through a bad time i'm going through a you know a growth time. you're going through hell right now quit keep keep going right winston churchill yeah yeah um but it is interesting that that the analogy used the parable um used was sheep because they're very much a moving um, yeah. situation why oh i guess they're always looking for the green pastures yeah i was gonna ask why but it's like yeah they'd eat all the grass yeah but it's just this constant moving on to um yeah and they're not being chased or yeah. anything they're moving you know because that's part of that's the part joy of, of being a sheep that's part <laughs> of life you know yeah and and more than that you can even look deeper in that right Different parts of life, you know, where you get stagnant and then I know you know, you might get worried of may move into another city or something, but you could be a sheep, right? Follow me on this. And you're in your patch of grass and it's like, well, there is grass here and, but you ate it all. And now, now it's all crab grass and, and, and everything's all dirt. And you're like, but this is all I've ever known. You have to have that faith that you're going to be that the next, that's right. The next Let the hill Holy you're Spirit going on. Lead you forward. Never be stagnant. You're going to end up eating all your grass. Yeah. Keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, That's That's definitely beyond spiritual. That's such a thing people always say. Keep, you know, got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. And so that is um, a good example. (laughs) No, I lost my train of thought. I was going to say something, but I got so into your. Yeah, that was was pretty good what I (laughs) I said there. (laughs) Into your story. Um, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. Okay, so how about we're talked about move, 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 keep going, da 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 da. Oh, I know what I was going to say. The thing that lost my mind was, um, you know, free range. You know how you you want range chicken? Yeah, you want to know that you're the. I want my chicken to have had a name. The yeah. I think that's weird. I, I'm, I'm happy with the free range, but don't tell me I'm eating Carl. Oh yeah, well, I'll still eat it, livestock, you know, is free range, so we're free range. But did you say we're free range? Yeah, we're free yeah. range. <laughs> we should be. <laughs> so yeah. when the aliens come, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be worth a little something. <laughs> so say we got some humans on on menu. Listen, free range. This one's named Spencer. Listen, they won't and know then, my name. Then, That's why I always change my name. And then there's gonna be an alien podcast. Follow me at this. Okay. And it, it's an alien podcast called Zeep and Zop. Okay. And they're like, I don't really like when they tell me my free range humans have a name. Oh yeah. Like, don't tell me that Spencer, I'm eating Spencer. I'd rather it be anonymous. Now, when I hear that, I'm like, at least give me the respect when you eat me, alien, to know my name. Remember that I was somebody. I'm Aliens gonna, don't I'm eat people. Start. How do you know? Because what what have they been eating all this time? Meat. From what? They're weird meat animals. Well, then they don't want you. They ran out. Like, do you want to eat some kind they, of they something? Got, they got overpopulated. They had to go look in other worlds for or maybe like this ready you think mm, hold up walk through thursday for a moment you think that why would they eat us we're humans and stuff what if they're so advanced they come and we look like nothing but chickens to them our brains are a chicken brain they're so advanced we look like chickens not look like chickens but like you know what i mean a chicken's an animal if we go to another country and there's a bunch of chickens balking around we'll be like Whoa, and then the meat is like really good? You sound like a vegetarian. Hey guys, I gotta tell you something. <laughs> no, I'm, we, I'm a vegetarian. You hear, but, but hear, hear what I'm saying? But, but what I'm saying is usually a carnivores. <laughs> no, I guess you're an omnivore. Is that when you eat both? Yeah, I'm an omnivore. I lean carnivore. Omnivores don't usually like to think too much about the thoughts of what animals feel. 
Uh, I uh, listen. So, um, he maketh me to lie down. Forceth in, me <laughs> to lie down in green pastures. You know, I, I've, I've maketh children to lie down for naps when they didn't want to. Well, yeah, but and then they fall asleep. Yeah, and and that goes back to last week. What I was or what I was saying earlier. Just a lot, a lot of th- it's throwback Thursday, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, of the this this hecticness that we put ourselves in, and yeah. it's like we oh we can't do it. Yeah, true. There's too much on our plate, like all these things, and and it's literally like relax. Like, yeah. Like you're you will be taken care of. Just have faith, and and so it's like this sheep. You know the uh, the shepherd's there with his rod and staff, ready to go. He knows he's gonna be awake, and this. You got a little skitsy sheep, and he's like, "Oh God, oh God!" And it's like, "Lay down, lay lay down, relax. I'm yeah. right here. Yeah, go to sleep." Mm-hmm. It's like that. Skittish sheep need to be told what to do. <laughs> they um, just yeah. need a little push in the right direction. Well, that's the thing. And once again, you know, detractors will say, "Thank you. I don't need your help. You know, uh, I don't need to be told when to rest. I I can find my own uh, nourishment." I know, you know, where to go in what season. Um, what a bossy uh, higher power you follow. But it's not like, like you know, when, when Jesus talks about the lost sheep, right? It's like he leaves the herd to find the one sheep. Mm-hmm. And, and we're not talking like some, you've seen art. Sorry for one second. You've seen art and, and the sheep. There's what, like seven or eight of them. Yeah. That's not. That's not uh, realistic of a flock of sheep. Sorry, seven billion sheep. <laughs> yeah. Seven billion. Okay. One shepherd. <laughs> um, well, that's like, that's the world. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what you were saying. I thought you were, I was talking little, about actual shepherds. Yeah, I was making a little, you know, good shepherd. Okay. Hands. Well, what I'm saying is, what do they have? Like a hundred or two? I don't know how much. Maybe. But what I'm saying is, because you're about to talk about looking for the one lost sheep. If you have five sheep and one's missing, of course, you're going to be like, where's Harvey? But I don't think the sheep were named because there were so very many. So for to look for one of those lost sheep, I feel is more symbolic. Yeah. Or yeah. more, you know. Think important. of it as a lot of sheep. Like that one truthfully doesn't matter. If, if, right. I, if I stumble upon the guy, I'd be like, dude, forget about that sheep. Right. Who cares? Probably right. wolf probably got him. And then it's like, no, all my sheep matter. But yeah, to go back to your other point. So we, we, we always emphasis this with we're not calling anyone sheeple this has nothing to do with being fa- yeah like being try to let go of that mentality mentality that, that people have, are now in we're moment. independent we have free will yada we're free range as the <laughs> aliens say but it's yeah so it's don't worry okay if you got it you know and, and it's like it, this is the more of that sheep that is worrying that sheep that is upset right the, the reason why he left the other sheep is because the other sheep are fine for mm-hmm. right now. And he's searching for the one who needs to be guided back. Right. And so don't think it's like it's a it's a uh, army line and then all the sheep are lined up and it's like, obey my every right. command, left foot up. It, it's not that at all. It's the shepherd wants what's best for all the sheep. Yeah. If the sheep are, are you know, following or, you know, living their good life, they're not getting eaten by wolves. They're not getting lost. And congratulations, you're you're a top tier sheep. And um, if you go along with my idea to use the pronouns, and you do say I'm good, like I'm I graduated from Temple Law, okay, I don't need your help. Do you know anybody who needs help? You know, do you know any? So you're a successful lawyer, yeah. you know, and you've got it all. Every chick, chick ticked, ticked off, checked off every box of a well-rounded individual who's completely, you know, non-reliant on anything. How about one of your um, clients, you know, or how about a relative or how about just a person on the assault the gas station? Yeah. First of all, everybody does need help. But, oh, yeah. and more but if you think not, then you can pray the 23rd Psalm for your client. Yeah, but I'm even going to stop you there. I think we need a. Why have we not have a gratitude podcast yet? Have, have we? we not? Maybe we did around Thanksgiving. Sounds like something we would have done. But I think gratitude's so important, spiritual or not. But if you are spiritual in any way, if you're not spiritual, then you're not going to care who to pray for anyone. If you are mm-hmm. spiritual, if you're not spiritual, gratitude's good to live a, a good, well-rounded life. If you are spiritual, you have that gratitude. So although you're not 
I'm fine. Like I don't need to be. It's okay. Then then be then say the prayer and be grateful that you're in a green pasture. Right. Be, be grateful right. that the waters are still. Right. You know, be 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 grateful for all all these. And so it doesn't. It, this isn't a prayer just for when you're when you're at a low point. This is, no. This is, and that's why I love it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's for everybody. For it's everybody. for the most successful person who doesn't, like you just said, doesn't doesn't have a care in the world. Why don't you say thanks? It's, nice. it's for the person who is stuck in a ditch and <laughs> when you the were wolves are nipping at us. No, no, remember when? Oh um, uh, yeah, you, you wake <laughs> up and your car is in a ditch. If you're in a ditch, it's if your life is good but someone else's isn't. It's you right. know. Um, it's good for everybody. It's it's good for everybody. It's the all purpose seasoning of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that is verse two. That's verse two. We should say it one more time, but I I, I know I mess the words up. So you just want to wrap it up with the the wait no we should at the end fill it in. So now we'll, now we'll say from the start to where we're at. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And that's where we're at. Who knows what's going to be next week? Nobody. (laughs) Nobody. But walk through Thursday Mm -hmm. is just beginning. We have four more weeks of it. So tune in next Thursday for a surprise twist in the story. Mm. I don't really know. Well, I think you're waiting for... The next week. A little bit. Is the, is the one following? Probably. Okay. But um, yeah, All so of it's good. All of it's good. Tune in tomorrow for our fun Friday. We're still figuring out a name a little bit. Figure we'll out Friday. Figure it out Friday. <laughs> I like, <I'll> like that. <laughs> figure it out Friday. Figure it out. Um, yeah. So like, subscribe, and personally share it with your neighbor. Yeah. Knock on their door and say, have you seen Croak and Crow? Yeah. And they'll say, get away from me. And then you'll say... No. (laughs) But that is our show. We'll be back tomorrow. Peace.